Okay, thanks everyone. Good afternoon and thank you for coming on such short notice. I want to begin by acknowledging that this press conference is taking place on the joint traditional and unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. And I also want to acknowledge and thank all BC teachers around the province who are in classrooms and schools right now. Usually we like to do our press conferences when schools aren't in session, um, but the province was doing its um, press conference earlier this afternoon and we felt we had to comment sooner rather than later. Uh, British Columbians should be very proud of BC's teachers. It's been a long and difficult road since government stripped our collective agreements, but teachers have continued to give their students their all. Today we're taking the first step towards righting the wrong that was done in 2002. We're not announcing a final agreement or final resolution. There's still a lot of crucial work to get full re restoration of all of our local and provincial language that was unconstitutionally legislated away in 2002. But today we are announcing, along with the province, an interim measure that will get over 1,000 new teaching positions posted. That means more teachers in schools and classrooms this month, which is what we've been talking about since the court decision came down on November 10th. It means more classroom teachers and more specialist teachers that our students so badly need. The key points of the memorandum of agreement are $50 million in new funding this month from the Ministry of Education to create 1,000 to 1,100 full-time equivalent teachers for the balance of the school year. A provision such that the new funding will be used to implement two priority measures, adding enrolling teaching positions, those are classroom teachers, and non-enrolling positions are specialist teachers in schools like school counselors, learning assistance teachers, teacher librarians, special education teachers, and other specialists across all grades in elementary, middle schools, and secondary schools. And the allocation of this net new funding at the school district level is to be jointly developed and decided through a district committee established by the superintendent and our local union president in that school district. Decisions about what jobs get posted and where need to be decided jointly by those local parties, and that's very important to us. There will also be a dispute resolution process if there's no agreement between the local parties. As for what's next, and that's the main part that I want to talk about today, we will now move to focus our, on our most important goal, and that's the full implementation of the pre-2002 collective agreement language that the Supreme Court of Canada restored in November 2016. That will now be the primary focus of our talks between the two parties, and we already have meetings scheduled for next week, and we've proposed dates and are arriving at scheduling dates for the next coming weeks as well. And it's very important that that continues, and we appreciate the fact that government and the employer have made themselves available to be meeting frequently. While the new funding announced today is badly needed, and will help many teachers and students, the government will have to provide, to be clear, they will have to provide significant more funding to meet the requirements of the Supreme Court of Canada's ruling. The BCTF's goal is to ensure that these talks are not long or drawn out, and that all boards of education, schools, teachers, students, and parents have certainty about how and when the language will be restored. It's important for parents and the public to understand how our restored contract language will make a difference for kids. The language guarantees supports for students with special needs and manage manageable class sizes for all. It ensures that teacher librarians, counselors, English language and other specialist teachers are there to give students the individual attention they need. We need to get all of that language back in place as soon as possible so that all future decisions about staffing and class organization are made within the provisions of our collective agreement. It's been almost 15 years to the day since then Minister of Education Christy Clark first brought in the unconstitutional legislation. Teachers and students have waited long enough. The work to repair the damage to public education has only just begun. It's going to take a significantly higher investment than the $50 million announced today to undo the damage this government has done to a generation of students. The onus is now on government to ensure that the February 21st provincial budget contains the necessary funding to make full restoration possible. 
parents, teachers, and the public expect as much, and we will all need to keep the pressure up to ensure that this happens. Thank you. Any questions? Crazy. Um, do you have, this is 50 million for half a year. Do you have an estimate of the full amount, what it might cost to fully um, get those clauses back in? Yes, uh, the question is about what would the full amount be to restore the clauses. We've estimated that it'll be about $300 million to restore all the clauses and get those provisions in place if we were talking about a full school year. That's consistent with the estimates that government did back in 2002 when they were contemplating um, enacting unconstitutional legislation in the first place, what sort of savings would result from the legislation. And, um, and we feel given uh, current um, numbers of students and the schools around the province that $300 million would be uh, about the right number for full scope restoration. After the Supreme Court win, uh, the finance minister thought that there wouldn't be possible to get uh, teachers into the classrooms this year. So what's changed? Well, it's been really constructive to have major decision makers at the table there across from us. Uh, I've been through this process before when we won the original court case back in 2011. We were having direct talks with government, but as you know, things played themselves out very differently um, in that situation. But uh, given the fact that we've had two uh, decisions of the Supreme Court of British Columbia in our favor, and that the Supreme Court of Canada has gone with a very strong dissent from the BC Court of Appeals, uh, which stated that the language is to be restored immediately. Um, and, and also the fact that we're in a very much different space and time. Um, things seem to be moving ahead. That said, we are frustrated with the pace, to be sure. Um, we were adamant that we wanted to see some changes um, early in 2017. And so this interim step will, uh, will ensure that. Now we have to go all the way. But yeah, for sure, there was some skepticism um, everywhere in terms of trying to get something done uh, by January 2017. We want to see more done sooner rather than later. Um, but this is, a, this is a first step. Now, this was the same BC Liberals that uh, had the cuts in the first place. Um, so does this agreement kind of help ease tension between the two groups? Um, in terms of attentions and relationships, the, the tensions haven't been outside of a context. Um, our most recent rounds of negotiations, our 2005 strike, um, the one we had in 2012 and again in 2014, a lot of that had to do with the outcome of this court case and whether or not um, government was willing to either restore provisions or negotiate new ones that would respect teachers' working conditions and ensure that kids had the supports in schools. And so it wasn't acrimony for the sake of acrimony. There were real, live, important issues at play there. And so, you know, we're still not all the way there. Um, you know, we, uh, we, we welcome um, this money in the first week of January 2017, but we're still not all the way there to the full amount um, or restoring the guarantees that were originally negotiated locally back in the day and, and provincially. That language has to be respected and that's what we're working toward. And so hopefully um, this first step will lead to um, further conversations that will be productive over the next few weeks. Got to get it done. Is, is 50 million divided by um, school district size? More or less, it'll be, there is currently uh, this thing called the Education Fund mm -hmm. in our collective agreement, and the $80 million for that this year has been allocated, sort of prorated on the number of students in a district, plus some small geographical um, variables that are added, and so these uh, monies, the $50 million for the next six months, will be allocated on that same basis. One of the biggest differences, though, is that this has a dispute resolution mechanism where the education fund doesn't, and there has to be mutual agreement about how it's expended, and the province has committed to providing an exact accounting about how much has been spent, where, and how, because that uh, transparency is really, really important to us. We've been concerned that the current education fund is a shell game and uh, leads us uh, to further our resolve that having the guarantees and the exact language in our collective agreement is really important because then the transparency is always there and there's always certainty about the, uh, the workload our members will have and the sorts of supports that students and parents can expect in their neighborhood public school. When you say it's a shell game, do you mean that budget cuts, <laughs> positions are cut, and then they get hired back through that education fund? 
yes, our concern with the education fund has been that it seemed to us that a lot of the jobs have been generated have simply been to make up for layoffs that have occurred the previous year, or it hasn't been a clear exactly how that money has been spent and on who. And so this, um, we have the commitment and some indication about how that's going to be accounted for and the commitment to share the ledger with us. Um, and we'll want to make sure that our locals see that too because we want to ensure that every penny has been spent and that all of it has been spent on frontline services provided by our members in schools. Okay, thank you for coming. <laughs>